Hey guys, this is Tim down here at the McCandless Honey Farm. Welcome back to the original with Tennessee Tim. I got a little bench right here behind the house, just a hodgepodge of stuff. Uh, one on first one I'm gonna show you is a nuke I caught the other day. Uh, a nuke, excuse me, a swarm I caught the other day. It's in a pro nuke. Uh, there's another one. I'm pretty sure it's dead. I'm just gonna open it up to confirm what I'm seeing. There's another one we manipulated around a little bit, trying to get it to throw some queen cells. That was uh, seven, nine days ago. So we ought to be seeing some stuff that's uh, start to cap off a little bit. And then just a couple different hives that I've, that were swarms back in the spring. Everything you're gonna see is it's either a swarm or a single frame split from this year. Uh, I got this little wire thing do, uh, rigged up, <clears throat> hold my cell phone, so uh, it'll hold you up, and I can kind of turn you around where you can kind of see what I'm looking at. Um, I ain't no expert by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just a hillbilly that really enjoys keeping bees. Uh, if you don't know my story, I, I, one time I was 625, 650, 675 pounds. They don't know exactly how big I was, to be honest with you. The doctor estimates 650, 675. There's a, I, I just happened to be standing here, but there's a bedroom window right there. When I was that big, that's all I could see. That carport's in the way and everything. And I prayed at that size, I prayed, Lord, you know, you give me the strength, get up and go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna lose the weight. I'm gonna get up and so lost, lost. I don't know, 120, 150 pounds, something like that. Had gastric bypass when I was at 464, and now I'm at 285, somewhere along in there. I, I still have a couple more skin removal surgeries that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit my my weight goal is I want to hit 250 pounds and I'm gonna go have another skin another series of skin removals. I done had one took off, but uh, somewhere about 385 pounds total uh, of fat and of course some of that skin weight where they cut some skin off. But uh, it was all because I remembered what a healthy hive of bees smelled like. I pray, Lord, give me strength to get up and go. And that's that's what this is. I'll show you my smoker right here, right? I got my smoker. That's my prayer, right? Just one more, Lord, please. Just one more half. Now here's the deal. Already starting out. The smoker ain't wanting to go, right? I thought I had it good and lit. May have to start this all over. May have to go get a veil. That's some of the joys of beekeeping. Everybody wants to be a beekeeper in April, but I'll get separation. Also grab the veil just in case they do get hot. 
Uh, I'm gonna give you a show you how I light a smoker. Most people have trouble getting a smoker lit and going. You don't want it up here in the top of your barrel because if it's up high, you throw a spark out, you can kill a queen. You don't want to blow hot smoke. You want to blow it on you like you like you're checking a baby bottle. You don't want to scorch a baby mountain no more than you want to scorch a queen. So you light your fire in the bottom of your barrel. Best way to do it that I have found, this is myself, this is how I do it. This has already been pre-packed. It's uh, from the last burning. I empty this thing about once every week, maybe once every two weeks, uh, when the ashes get up pretty deep. And you can tell, but uh, you pack it really tight. You heat the outside. Well, you need to make fire. Heat source, oxygen, fuel. Mm -hmm. My self lighting torch don't work right, so I gotta keep a little cigarette lighter around handy. So the tip is this on the outside of your barrel. And I know it looks funky, but you ain't taking it to the Christmas parade, right? You heat up the outside of your can. What that does is you build a fire in the bottom of your can. So everything on top of it, the straw and wood chips or whatever above it, it'll catch a hot spark coming up. So when you blow it out, you're blowing a nice cool smoke. Hey, that's just a, that's a freebie. <laughs> that's just a freebie. Let's go over here and look in this box of bees. What do you say? I'm having a blessed day. I really do hope y'all are. I'm going to get you turned around here. Well, you can watch this. I built, I, I built me a little... A little... Uh, telephone holder. Like I said, this is that swarm. This was five frames of... Uh, plastic foundation I'll put in here and they are doing lovely okay girls my name's Tim I'm gonna be your beekeeper for a while and thank y'all for coming and staying with us y'all hear me talking to the bees or praying or anything that's just how I roll I feel like every day I get to get up and do this is a blessing. Kind of windy, so they may get a little, they may get a little irritated. Now I see this center frame has not been drawn yet. Beekeepers know most of the time they start in the middle and work their way out. This is right backwards, to be honest with you. There's nothing on this one side right in the middle. Let's see if I can get one of these out. Okay, girls. Let's see what you got. <laughs> this is the one that was in that uh, crepe myrtle a couple weeks ago. They're doing very well, as you can see. See a lot of pollen coming in. Tennessee's got a lot of pollen flow right now, and it's fixing to really pick up. If you ask anybody with any allergies they got around here, they'll tell you Tennessee got the pollen. Let's see. This will be the number two frame. Pollen, no eggs. I see a chewed out queen cell. That ain't nice. Y'all re clean yourselves in this time? Mmm. Little patch of brood, cat brood. Like I said, this is the this will be the center frame. 
There's nothing on this back side. I don't know what's on the camera side. Nothing on that side. They haven't got to the middle of it yet. From what I can see where I'm standing at, I'm betting Mama's gonna be right here. Let me stick it back in the hive. All them bees. It's just a good day to be out here working with them. I hope they stay mild and calm. I, I don't enjoy working hot bees at all. I mean, I got a jacket and I got a veil, but when you, when you put that stuff on, it kind of blinds you. It, it does me, I'm blind anyway. I wear blindfolds, right? Whip brood right there. You got a few more days to have his middle one drawed out. It's looking nice on this side. I see another queen seal too. Chewed out. I'm gonna button these back together. Just peeking, not getting in a snatch, just letting them do their thing. I think one stung me on the shoulder blade just now. Pretty sure of it. Okay, girls, we'll see y'all in a few days. This next one I'm gonna show you is the one I was really interested in. Um, we manipulated the eye the other day, make it throw a few queen cells. This stuff ain't too hard to do. It's just getting out here in the heat, you know. Everybody, everybody wants to be a beekeeper in April. It's August that separates them, you know. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay, girls. Y'all sound quiet. Mmm, too quiet. This is supposed to be a queenless colony. <laughs> Um, supposed to be queenless. They all quiet. Oh, look. I love all God's creatures except hive beetles and varroa mites and wax moths. I love all God's creatures. Let me hit them with a little bit of smoke. This is a really mild colony. They are very, very mild. I mean like Cheech and Chong laid back mild. I don't know what the deal is. It's awful quiet. Usually when they're queenless, they're real noisy. It's almost a roar. Uh, uh, you want to talk about you want to talk about the Joe is a beekeeping right here and go, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. beautiful 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 mmm it's got a killer flavor. Not sure what flavor it is, but it's very good. Y'all aren't too quiet. Oh, look how pretty that is. There's some pollen on that one's legs. See the yellow pollen going there? I don't know if the camera's picking that up or not. More cat brood. <coughs> Excuse me, piece of wax. Kind of strangled me. Snuck up there and done try to strangle me. 
All right, y'all supposed to be queenless, but y'all acting like y'all got somebody in here with y'all. Where are you at? Hmm. Ooh, pretty, pretty, pretty. Love to see them draw out them new frames. Beautiful. As curly as the Three Stooges as would say, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, I see some eggs. Okay, so uh, apparently my attempt in making this place queenless uh, epically failed. <laughs> They must have called in a virgin out on a mating flight. That happens sometimes. That happens. Mm. They looking pretty though. Tell you what guys, I am going to button this one back together. And uh, I'm going to share this little video of what I found so far. And if you would, oh, I laid my, see, that's what I'm saying. They don't, they don't sting me. I laid my hand on her and she's actually dead. See that? <laughs> she's already dead. <sighs> now I got that alarm turned on. <laughs> um, I'm You will share this videos with your friends. We're gonna try to try to build us a little YouTube video channel. You know, the guy bringing himself back from losing that kind of weight. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you something. There's a part two to this. Good Lord, give me a vision about these bees. Just as sure as I'm standing here talking to this camera. And I'm gonna chase it. Just as sure as I'm standing here. To oh, there's a queen. There's a queen right there. I thought I was queenless. I was queenless. I need the camera where y'all can see her. Give her her hair did. I can see them and mark them. That's usually the best way to do them. A white knot. Oh, tip got stuck. Hate when they do that. Okay. Give her a pretty, pretty, pretty. This year's color is white. I thought I was clean, cleanless in this one, and I made a uh oh. Get up there with you. Get up there with your daughter. Run on home. See the white. Put her on this outside edge. Button this thing back together. You ever paint job when you see them? I used to. Didn't want to mark them. I was, I was afraid I'd hurt them. And, well, you had to get over that. That's kind of like working them. You know, I work most of the time. I work them without a veil. And it ain't a, well, just standing there talking about it, wandering up there and reminding me I needed some of that in my thumb right there. <laughs> You're going to get stung doing this. Don't let nobody lie to you. Kind of like a carpenter, you're gonna get splinters, right? Welder, I, I, mean, I got, I got burn marks on me still where I was a pipe fitter. Everything in life, you're gonna have to sacrifice a little of your flesh for it. It's worth it if it's something you love. This right here, doing this, doing these bees. This is uh, that's why I get out of bed in the morning. This is. 
what caused me to lose my weight. This is the the healing elixir of life, right? Watch what you eat. I changed what I ate, man. I used to eat like a man. I ate like a. If you can imagine a trash panda. Y'all don't know what that is. In the South, that's what we call a raccoon. You can imagine a trash panda living behind a, the dumpster at a Mexican joint, a Chinese joint, a McDonald's all share. That's pretty much my diet. <laughs> well, I about killed me. I was uh, wearing a 68 pair of pants and an 8X shirt. This morning I got up and I put on a 3X shirt. A pair of 42 britches. Thank the Lord for that. Jesus give me strength to get up and do that. Nobody else. I give him the praise. Well, the medical system. Hey, man, the medical system, they bounced me around 15 years. They had me hooked on opioids. and Dude, it was miserable. Miserable life. Miserable existence. Jesus made me free, and I'm free indeed. Hey, y'all do me a favor. Wherever you at, share this with your friends. I'm down here in Kaleoka. But share this with your friends. Buy local, be local, be original. Y'all have a blessed day.